John Brewer from Yale. Good morning. I'm John Brewer from the Yale University. I'm a grad student, and I'm really interested in the compositions and uh, formation mechanisms for small planets. But before we get there, it's important to actually know as much as we can about the star. All of the stuff that we learn about the planets comes from the star world. So uh, here, Courtney Dressing has shown us that. Despite the 800 or so planets that we found in this region of, the, of this plot, this mass radius plot, uh, ones which have their masses measured to better than, say, 20%, uh, are few and far between. Uh, if we throw in the Earth and Venus, there's only 12 points in this plot. So um, typically, we've used uh, spectroscopy to get at these fundamental parameters, uh, um, the radius of the star, the temperature, the, the metallicity, because it hits kind of a sweet spot in terms of observational cost and, and precision. But the accuracy of the surface gravity has always been an issue. And what my work has been focused on recently is, is trying to really nail that down. If you don't get the gravity right, then you're also going to get other things like temperature and metallicity wrong because of the degeneracies between the parameters when doing the, the forward model. So I've developed with Deborah Fisher, Sarvani Basu, Jeff Valenti, and Nicolai Pristinov a new procedure that uses spectroscopy made easy that is able to, to greatly improve the surface gravities that we get for the stars. And the way that we did it is we've expanded the rate length coverage, much like Ian was just discussing. We've not quite the full optical spectrum, but 350 angstroms anyway. And uh, we're including uh, around 7,000 lines, both uh, uh, atomic and molecular. In addition to including magnesium B triplet, which has been traditionally how we get the surface gravity, uh, unfortunately it breaks down uh, after you go above about 6,000 Kelvin. We're also including 900 iron lines, uh, both iron one and iron two lines. And we're breaking up the fit to fitting the global stellar parameters, then fitting for the abundances, then going back with the, that new abundance pattern and fitting for the global parameters again. Uh, and finally doing one last pass for the touching up the the abundances. And that's managed to, to get us uh, substantially better uh, surface gravities. Here I had 43 stars which had astroseismically determined surface gravities, which should be very accurate. And in red, I'm showing uh, what our previous procedure, the Valentin Fisher 2005, this Fox catalog, if you're all familiar with it. Uh, they, the, in red, you can see there's substantial scatter and a, and a trend there with temperature. And in blue, our new procedure uh, is able to recover the astroseismic sur surface gravity uh, to very high precision and accuracy. Uh, as you go, um, I don't think I can point, but the discrepant point there at minus 0.2 dex uh, is one that's actually a fairly rapid rotator, greater than 25.6 kilometers per second. Mm -hmm. And so as we go to higher rotations, this breaks down. But for the most part, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, in addition, uh, we don't seem to have any trends with log G or effective temperature or metallicity uh, for the entire sample. And this uh, uh, is great because uh, so Torres et al. in 2012 showed that 
when you're getting some of the parameters wrong, you often are getting the others wrong in a degenerate way. And uh, so the, the scatter, as it says up there, is, is small, uh, and it's a very small offset. But since I had these while well, I was trying to develop the procedure, we also took a look at the Taurus et al. sample. We had uh, quite a few of those stars uh, also uh, high resolution spectroscopy. And we do slightly worse, there's a little more scatter, uh, the offset's a little larger, but still we're doing very well. And there doesn't seem to be much of a uh, trend. The, the one, <coughs> one thing that we do see is that in the, the solid square points here are stars where we uh, have a signal noise of only about 40, whereas the, the sample that I uh, had for the after seismic targets all had signal noise greater than 100. So as signal noise goes down or rotation goes up, then we start doing worse. Uh, but otherwise, we're doing a pretty good job. But as I mentioned in the beginning, the composition and formation mechanisms are what I was interested in. And so the reason for getting, one of, one of the reasons for getting the accurate gravity, is other than trying to get accurate radii, which we're going to need to examine the planets, is to actually get the compositions of the stars, assuming that that's going to be pretty close to the dis initial discomposition and what the, what the planets had to start with. <coughs> so I have a, a sample of 20 asteroid spectra where I'm assuming that we know roughly the <laughs> composition of the sun. And I'm getting back the, the composition for 15 elements uh, to pretty good accuracy, a slight offset and low scatter. And so I can start to then ask questions like uh, of, the, of my sample. And one of the first things I looked at was the C to O ratio, because there's been uh, several papers in the past couple of years about how if the initial discompositions varied, then you might end up with very different planet compositions for the same bulk density. Uh, and so here is, I picked out the, the best part of my sample. I've, I've run this procedure now on 3,400 spectra from the California Planet Survey. I'll be publishing this catalog soon. This uh, is some very early results from that where we're looking at the, the, the best thousand or so stars uh, from this sample, the ones that had the, the best fits. And there aren't really any high C to O stars. Uh, it's really hard to see the one uh, star there past 1.0 and 1 past 0.8. So in essence, this distribution looks a lot like the distributions that we had from uh, lower resolution spectroscopy, SPSS, uh, and, and uh, the, those, those surveys. Uh, so it's still possible that you can have, say, diamond planets, uh, but they're going to be rare. Uh, I plan on doing some additional spectroscopy, or abundance work, uh, and those papers should be coming out by the end of the summer. So, uh, just to sum up, uh, to, to get at the, the properties of the planets, we're going to really need to know the, the stellar properties accurately. This new te technique that I've developed, <coughs> pardon me, that I've developed at least gives us accurate gravities, and I'm hoping uh, to show that it also gives us accurate uh, abundances. And I'll be publishing the uh, catalog with all of these parameters, as well as uh, some looks at the abundances. Uh, so thank you. Some estimates as high as like 1.12, and uh, 
in my sample, by the way, 55 cankery comes out of it about solar. Uh, and so uh, it, it is an odd star. Uh, I have a question. Uh, for your asteroid spectra, um, I noticed, I mean, it wasn't scattered around zero, it looked slightly above that. Do you no. think that is asteroids affecting the spectra, or? I don't think so. Uh, this, the, the offset is 0.024 x. Uh, I think that's much smaller than my natural observer, probably about 0.5 yeah. x. So you're still consistent then? Yeah. Okay. 